Four years ago, two of my nephews, Kevin and Brendan, began their college careers. Four years later, they find themselves doing their last semester in their parents' home, and instead of the president of the university giving them their diploma, it will be a United States postal worker. Two of my other nephews, Dylan and Sean, began their 2020 college baseball season back in February. They had hopes and dreams of ending the season in Omaha at the College World Series. Only after a few weeks into the season, it was stalled, and now they're having a catch with their dads in their backyards. Our friar bishop, Gregory Hartmeyer, was named the Archbishop of Atlanta in the beginning of March, a great honor for the Franciscan Order and for Our Lady of the Angels province in particular. Plans were made to hold the installation ceremony in the biggest church in the Archdiocese of Atlanta due to the huge crowd that was expected because the cathedral is just so small. In 10 days, those plans will be put aside and the new Friar Archbishop will be installed in an empty cathedral in front of nine other people. Yes, we realize that life is changed, it's not ended. Living rooms have been turned into gyms, dining rooms have been transformed into boardrooms, and the kitchen table has returned to its rightful place for schoolwork. Stories like these of dashed expectations, hopes, and dreams have been shared repeatedly during this coronavirus time. Proms have been canceled, weddings postponed or done over Zoom, thousands of jobs lost, Families who didn't even know what the inside of a soup kitchen or food pantry looked like are now depending on what is being handed out to the long lines of hungry people. Mourners having to bury their loved ones at the graveside without a funeral mass. And to make the experience even more painful, their loved one not being able to be surrounded by family at their bedside due to no visiting restrictions in the hospitals. Lord, don't you even care? Do you not understand? Do you even know what is taking place these days in our world? As we continue to walk along the road, hoping to make it to the other side of the coronavirus journey, we may begin to lose hope. Depression, anxiety, frustration, just to name a few, may seep into our lives. Heading out on a journey without hope is like wandering around aimlessly. There is no destination if there is no hope. We certainly recognize our own temptation to hopelessness at this time. When will it end? Will we ever get a vaccine so we can go back to work or travel, gather with family and friends or attend mass? In the midst of looking downcast, the risen Jesus draws near to us and walks with us. Jesus doesn't walk in front of us, he doesn't walk behind us, but he walks with us. Jesus, who did everything right in his life, he performed mighty deeds and wonders and signs, he suffered and was killed. He understands our pain, our frustrations, our loneliness, our broken expectations and disappointments, our deaths. But on this journey, the Risen One hears our questions and invites us to share our stories with him. And we do tell stories. We tell lots of stories. We even post them on Facebook and Snapchat. We watch them on TV. And ending the CBS Evening News as Nora O'Donnell shares a feel-good story of strength survival and selflessness each night after a half hour of sad news. But the key to telling stories is not simply just to tell them, but to pay attention to how we link our stories to the story of our faith. We link the ancient stories of our sacred scriptures to the experiences of our day as a key to finding meaning in this very moment. So stories of the healthcare workers, hospital staff, and other first responders remind us of Matthew 25, where Jesus says, whenever you do this for the least, you do to me. Or the stories of the Franciscan Center in Baltimore, whose meals went from 300 to 3,000 
in just a few days, call to mind the example of the times of Jesus' love and healing and feeding ministry being poured out. To the teachers and parents whose computer skills limp along, but nonetheless creatively collaborate to keep children from falling behind, remind us of Jesus telling his disciples, let the little children come to him. These are moments when listening and learning are valued above all else. Our stories are the unique ways people have found to share what they have, to making masks out of Dunkin' Donuts, or to celebrate life of a longtime parishioner in our parish up in Kensington, Connecticut. She turned 100 years old, couldn't get out of the house, so the friars and the good people of the parish had a parade of honking cars in front of her house holding happy birthday signs. Those people who break out of their comfort zone and reach out to neighbors who they probably never spoke to before, but those neighbors whose skin may be different color, whose lifestyle is not what they would have chosen or they worship in a different way, but nonetheless, they reach out and they break bread together. And they're reminded of the hospitality that Jesus received from those two disciples on the road to Emmaus. Choosing what stories to tell and linking them to our sacred story reminds us of the hope that we find in Jesus Christ. We are people who live in hope. And I believe because of the love of God and Jesus from the foundation of the world, hope is part of our spiritual DNA. Jesus walks among us, not only to offer, but to remind us of the hope we have. Jesus, risen from the dead, walks among us, he holds our hand, and helps us to recall that God raised him up, releasing him from the thrones of death, because it was impossible for him to be held by it. And the good news is we participate in that death, burial, and resurrection by our own baptism. So there lies our hope. Our hope, our faith are in God. Today I invite you, sometime as you enter into quiet, private prayer, reflect on the good news, those stories of hope, courage, and compassion that you hear, some in your own homes, some in your own street. And before you reach for those spiritual tums, allow your hearts to burn, as it will be the reminder of the risen Jesus, who has, who is, and who will continue to walk with us on our journey.